You now know about three types of symmetry. Things that have cylindrical symmetry. For us, that's going to be long lines of charge. Long lines of charge have cylindrical symmetry. And the electric field due to a long line of charge will also be spherically symmetric, or cylindrically symmetric, sorry about that. We could see that by taking a Gaussian cylinder about our line of charge. We could observe that cylindrical symmetry by taking a Gaussian surface about our line of charge the, and that such that the surface is a Gaussian cylinder, and we would see that the electric field everywhere on that surface is uniform if our line of charge is lies right along the central axis of our cylinder. You now know about spherical symmetry. Point charges and spheres have spherical symmetry. The electric field for things with spherical symmetry is spherically symmetric. What that means is if you take a Gaussian sphere where the charge is at the center of the sphere, the electric field everywhere on the surface of that Gaussian sphere is constant in magnitude and constant in direction if you take the direction relative to a vector that is normal to the surface of the sphere. And you've also learned about planar symmetry. Planes or sheets of charge have planar symmetry. And that can be illustrated by by um, looking at a Gaussian box. Charges with planar symmetry have a uniform electric field about them. That electric field is constant in magnitude and in direction on either side of that plane of charge. A Gaussian box that passes through the plane of charge can be used to observe that the electric field has planar symmetry. These types of symmetry will form an important part of being able to do calculations with Gauss's law.